how to love a human. I am with Ramon, how aka my husband. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very relaxed and very um, reflecting today. I'm just reflecting on a lot of stuff today. Okay, cool. So that's going to be good for this conversation. Yeah. And so I'm going to start yeah. with my non researchy question first. Okay. Are you feeling human? Hmm. Or human as fuck? Human AF. You know, today, I'm just feeling human. Okay. Today. What does just feeling human mean for you? Human, Just feeling human today, for me, feels like I'm just super balanced. Mm, super okay. super duper balanced because human as fuck would be for me feeling some of the, the extremes of our human nature mm -hmm. you know so I'm just feeling really super balanced today just really feeling like accomplished today mm, really, and feeling, accomplished. Mm -hmm, really feeling just at ease emotionally um, just grounded spiritually mm -hmm. you know um, so yeah, just, I feel a balance. I just feel a good balance today. Okay. Um, yeah. And what I like about what you said was like, you feel at ease, emotionally grounded, spiritually, and that's the balance. Mm -hmm. Cause when mm -hmm. your emotions are yeah. in disarray, Oof. then the spirit feels like, oh, I gotta hold it down. That's when the ass butt comes in. <laughs> <laughs> you try to figure it out. Like, um, okay. <laughs> Cause I mean, human as fuck to me would be like, the extremes of that and feeling like I have to compensate mm -hmm. for something, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the normal, that's the no, the normal modus operandi, right? It's like we always struggling each day when yeah. you're human as fuck, and it's like, oh, let's let's try to find some balance. But today was one of those rare days that I, I found some balance. Well, shoot, I'm happy to hear it. Dun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ring the bell. Dun. Wow. <laughs> That's rare. Well, yeah. So, what are your most salient identities? And it mm. could be anything from race, class, gender, sexual identity to Ooh. more nuanced things that people don't often think about. Ooh, that's a big question. It is. It's been years since I thought about that. Listen, because you know we did this thing. Yes. When I first started, first. you were the first person. This was before we were married. Was when it? I started. I want to say that we were engaged. When we recorded the first part and then we got married wow. and recorded the second part. That's true. I was not a husband. I was not a father. And I was not any of those identities, those those things that are bestowed Man. upon me. Wow. <laughs> so it's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. Well, um, through the journeys that I've been through, um, not to sound weird, but... My first identity now is human. Mm, okay. And I know if we, you know, we don't have a loving human. Yeah. And I don't want to sound like cliche, like how oh, I'm trying to fit with the but program. Yeah. But on a day like today, when I'm balanced, mm -hmm. and this changes, right? This this can ebb and flow. But since you asked me today, today I feel I feel like a human first. That's my most mm. salient identity. What makes it most salient to you? Because when I'm feeling balanced, I'm not feeling the influences from the outside world that influence your self-identity, that Ooh, influence okay. your, your thought processes, right? So I haven't been in too many spaces today that reminded me that I was the social construct of black. Mm, okay. Right? I wasn't in too many spaces where... I was around, let's say, you know, a different gender that was like, oh, by the way, you're a man. Mm -hmm. Or, by the way, you're this. Or, by the way, you're that. And so it's like, with a balanced feeling day, that's why it's just so rare for yeah. me. It's like, I actually just feel like an inhabitant of planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. just a human. And I think that's a good place to be in today. Yeah. You know, it's definitely, a, like I said, it's a rare space mental and emotional space for me to be in but today my most salient identity 
identity is human. And then I would say, if I really uh, delved into it, um, father. Mm. That's my second. Stand out. Because, and I'm saying father in the sense of, because anybody can be a father. Mm -hmm. You know, even a mother can be, a woman can be a father. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the gender out of it, and I'm really just feeling what I felt today because I had an interaction at um, our son's school yeah. with another father. Mm. And instantly I felt myself fathering his child. Mm -hmm. because he let his child run a little free. <laughs> so I felt daddy kick in even for his son. So mm -hmm. I'm picking up his son, correcting him softly, yeah. setting him on the right track along with our son while mm -hmm. they were playing together, mm -hmm. while we were, me and the dad were having a conversation. And I just felt the energy of, oh, I'm dad. Yeah. Like I feel real big dad energy. Okay. You know what I mean? How does that feel in your body like? To know you are a dad, you are a father. If I can liken it to an instrument, if it's a guitar, when I'm feeling like a dad, it's like the bass E string being strummed and it having the longest resonance. And it's just like there's a bass vibe of like, mm -hmm. I'm just vibing on that. Mm hmm you know what I mean? All the other strings are different. And it resonates. It just resonates throughout mm -hmm. the day. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's weird. It's kind of hard to explain. But it's just a vibe you're in. It's uh -huh. just a mode you're in. It's like, I feel proud. Proud. Okay. That that vibe, that, that E string is just like a certain sense of pride. Like, I feel proud. Mm. It's that frequency of pride. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I am glad to be here. Mm. I am glad to be able to do this. I am grateful to be able to be here to aim him in the right direction. Yeah. I love being here. Mm -hmm. I love this space. Boom. You know what I mean? Like yes. and it's just a vibe of like hmm. Again, going back to why I feel so balanced today yeah. and why I just feel human. Like I just feel balanced emotionally and spiritually. And allowing myself to feel all of these emotions. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, uh, these great emotions, these good emotions. What hit me as you were saying that was just knowing, like, the role that fatherhood did or did not play mm. in your life. Yeah. And to be able to be in that role. Yes. To embody it. Yes. To feel proud, to love it, to yes. enjoy it. Yes. It's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. beautiful. I've never had the chance to really see big fatherhood modeled mm -hmm. to me. Um, What's the difference between big fatherhood and not big fatherhood? Okay, so that's, good. that's a good question. Yeah. So big fatherhood is um, me. Mm -hmm. It's a man that's proud, that's glad to be there, that is, you know, super invested, super involved, super engaged yeah. with the children. Um, Little fatherhood looks like little time spent there, mm -hmm. little engagement, mm -hmm. right? Little, little care. And I hate to say this, I, I'm not putting nobody on blast, but I can see that the other dad was on. He's probably not a little dad, but in that moment, he was on little dad energy. Mm -hmm. He was kind of like FTS. Mm -hmm. I'm done with daddy in the day. I'm picking him up from school. I might have had a rough day. Okay. I'm not calling him out as a forever. Because we all been there. We all been there. <laughs> Some days we I might have a little bad energy, like, right? Listen, Eat, I take can't. a bath, go to sleep. <laughs> right. It's over with. You're like, you know, I'm doing the bare minimum. Yeah. I can get through and still love Right. You. <laughs> right. And so we modulate between big dad and little dad energy. It just so happens I feel like my little dad energy it's still pretty big dad energy. Okay. On the day that I'm feeling like little dad, I feel like it's still amplified. Okay. Over the normal, yeah, over okay. the normal baseline of what you see out in the world because my dad was absent. Mm -hmm. So you know, we we all we always overcompensate for stuff. We we went out went without. Yeah. Right. So it's like I'm overcompensating a little bit, you know, in the dad department. Just like I overcompensate with work. Yeah. Just like I overcompensate with a lot of things. So 
you know. Do you think there will ever be a time where it's not overcompensation, where it just feels like, mm. I'm not sure what to call it, but you know, because I feel you on the overcompensation, like mm -hmm. the things we put a lot of extra energy into. Mm -hmm. And it's not a bad or good it's thing, not. but it's like, do you ever feel like there will be a time in dad, in fatherhood, where it's just like, whatever comes before overcompensation? No, mm -hmm. I don't. I think that's the blessing and the curse of, of that trauma. Okay. Right, that I had with not having a dad. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, the curse was you don't got a dad. The blessing is you're going to overcompensate for your son <laughs> and you're going to set this model, right? And then your son's going to grow up, hopefully, and have kids one day. And he's going to have a high bar to hold up to. He's going to know we already big see dad him energy. practicing right. fathering with teddy bears. With teddy and toys and stuff. Like right. he brings them everywhere. He's like, hey, do you need something to eat? Teddy would like yeah. something to eat too. Nurture them. <laughs> right. right. Putting band-aids on him. He hurt his knee. So he needs a kiss. Yeah. He does. So I, I like to see that. You know, that, that lets me know I'm modeling big dad energy. Mm -hmm. You know? And it and that that inspires me to keep going. Yeah. With that big dad energy. So So you got human as salient, father as salient. Mm -hmm. What about some of the identities that you didn't mention that are as salient? One mm -hmm. thing that you said that resonated with me was like your social interactions are what make certain identities more or less salient on any given day. Yes. Yes. So when you're when you're out in public, when I'm out in public, I speak for myself. Um, people people try to reflect back to you what they want you to believe about yourself. Ooh. Say that one more time. People try to reflect back to you what they want you to believe mm. about yourself. You got to break that down because that just hit. Right? So, you know, if, if somebody sees me walk into a grocery store and... You know, we live in a state that we live in. Mm -hmm. um, predominantly, um, the social construct of white, mm -hmm. right? All various socioeconomic levels of white. Yeah. Um, so when I walk into a grocery store, the inherent subconscious white supremacy in some of those people comes out through a frown. Mm comes out through a comes out through a grab my purse tighter comes out through a I'm gonna not break my path I'm gonna bump your shoulder and let you know that I am the king or queen here and that you should step to the side boy and let me through yeah. you know um and so they try to reflect back to you what they want you to be mm. what they want to believe about you um, they try to provoke that interaction right they try to get subconsciously you to endorse their vision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to give it energy yes yes so that it can enliven it yep mm -hmm. so if i give him a frown and then i bump him with my car a little bit see i knew that was an angry black man mm. i know they all ignorant i know they all this and so it's like that's just one example right, right. you know you may run into a woman who who's in the store and is feeling some type of way someday and you hold the door for her and it's like, I don't need you to hold the door for me. Mm -hmm. and, and go into this whole soliloquy of why you shouldn't hold the door for me. And, all, and it's just like, that's what you wanted me to be. But I'm going to be who I'm going to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I really just, I didn't have that type of day today. It was a beautiful day of just neutral interactions. Yeah. You know, with nobody trying to impart what they wanted me to be. Um, impart the social construct of black or or try to even impart the social construct of the n-word you know what i mean yes I know. the actions of that, that are you know attached to that identity and that creation that social creation so it really felt good just to be human today mm -hmm. you know and to be a dad today and to really just sit into those two energies but definitely of course the world will remind you that you know you are black in America, mm -hmm. you know, on most days. So definitely that's one of those identities that I feel. Yeah. Um, the what world. What does it mean to you 
to be black versus what the world tries to mm. evoke in blackness. Since you talked about, you highlighted it's a social construct. Mm -hmm. Blackness is, whiteness is. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you if you were constructing it for yourself? Mm. Black to me, first of all, I don't like the word. Mm -hmm. be just because of the the images that, that it invokes, mm -hmm. right? You know, black death, black plague, black mm -hmm. this, black that, absence of light. Da -da -da -da. It's like, wow, you pick a word that's not scribe our people. We're melanated, mm -hmm. we're brown, we're all skin tones of the sun. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, first that just gets on my nerves. Um, but to be black, to be black to me, it's hard to say it. It's hard to talk about it because yeah. I don't, act, and this is going to sound really weird. I don't identify as black. Mm -hmm. I identify as a brown man who is oppressed because of his skin because there are some people who worship skin color mm -hmm. over gods yeah. or humans, right? And so it's like when you start talking about this and you, you really start getting into this whole skin worship culture, right? And it's just like, I am a human. Mm -hmm. I don't, I really honestly can't tell you what it is to be black because I'm a human. I don't. Besides liking barbecues. Not barbecues. Besides <laughs> liking soul food, right? Besides, and not just liking it because there are some white people who like soul food, who like barbecues. But I'm saying I grew up with these things, yes. right? I grew up with um, I grew up in poverty, mm -hmm. but that's not specific to black. Right. You know what I mean? So it's really difficult to talk about it because I'm not, mm -hmm. but it's what they want to reflect. It's, it's an identity that the world has created, that America has created, right. and right. it's exactly. trying to still reflect it on us, even though we're not. Because if I told you all the things that I like, you know those voices online that read like a YouTube video and they sound like yeah. this and their video and they're robotic yeah. in the voice? If I typed out who I am and what I like and have one of those robot voices read it to you, I guarantee you could not guess the race mm. of me. Okay, because you have such a diverse portfolio mm -hmm. of things you like. Right. People wouldn't be able to assign stereotypical blackness to it. Mm -hmm. But the way I see it, blackness is all of those things. It is. It is. And so, that, and that's my point. Blackness is all. Mm -hmm. So, there, therefore, there really is no definition of mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It it's all encompassing. You'll find me listening to Nine Inch Nails one day. Jason Aldean, Randy Travis. You'll find me listening to uh, Master P. You'll find me listening to some folk music. Not Master P, though. Master P. <laughs> you gotta do Master P. P. Master P. What's up? What's up, P? What up, P? <laughs> Great business mind. But, you know, and it's like, you'll find me listening to Bob Dylan. Like, you'll yeah. find me listening to all these different type of artists. I do Bob with P, though. Y'all <laughs> for real. Maybe some mystical. Yeah. But it's like, man, you can't, you can't box mm -hmm. me in. You can't box me so in. So black feels like a box. It does. Mm -hmm. Like a black box. It does. I like tennis. I like golf. I also like basketball. I like hacky sack. You do be liking hacky sack. I like hacky sack. I like frisbee. What's that I like frisbee golf. Like that is, the hole is in that wood thing. I like and you throw uh, the sack in there. Yes, the sack in the wood hole game thing. I forgot what it's called, I but I love it. <laughs> yeah, cornhole. Cornhole. I love cornhole. Listen. You know? Oh. So it's like if but I type that out. All of that is black too. It's black. black. Anything that you are yes. to me yes. is also black. Yes. So I feel you on like there are these really narrow constructions of what black is that were imposed, mm -hmm. imposed. Mm -hmm. and I think in some ways there are some narrow constructions that P 
people who identify as black adopt and kind of yes. try to survey other black people out of and you're saying yes. I'm black and all of these things are true yes mm -hmm. and all of these things um I mean, it's a psychological program, mm -hmm. pro programming, right? I think I heard uh, some, I forgot the doctor's name. I want to say Dr. Bennett, but he talked about um, if all white people disappeared off the face of the earth tomorrow, white supremacy would still exist mm. because it's so ingrained in everybody. It. It's so ingrained that even if all white people disappeared, white supremacy would still exist. Therefore, as a cultural, as a cultural construct, mm -hmm. therefore, the social construct of black would still exist. It still exist. Even with the absence of white. Because anti-blackness is an inherent component yes. of white supremacist yes. culture. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so many people have bought into anti-blackness. Yep. Wholesale because they need something by which to level themselves up. Yep. That it doesn't matter that white people exist or don't exist anymore. No. Isn't that amazing? And the, um, the amazing, the more amazing thing about it is, the white people make up fourteen percent of the global population. <laughs> that's it. Mm. And that's just people who identify as white. They white. may or may not be like biologically white since it's not really a thing you know what i mean because it's a social construct yeah. you armenian you like well kim kardashian you armenian boo period poo right <laughs> <laughs> like you armenian there's you know you russian you you uh palestinian but because it's so broad the concept the, the social construct of white is so broad it's like it's broad but it's not but it is. But it, <laughs> but it isn't. <laughs> Our son does that. It is, but, but it not. isn't. <laughs> and that's interesting that the, the, the construct of white is so large and all-encompassing. You know, you could be Irish. Your ancestors can speak Italian. They can speak mm -hmm. French. They can do all these things that you're considered white in America. Yeah. Um, that won't fly outside of America. I won't. But, you know, white people get checked outside of America real quick. You American. Yeah, and that's it, and that's all. <laughs> and that's it, and that's all. <laughs> but it's, it's so interesting in our box of, per se, black people. Mm -hmm. It's so narrow, and it's just so confined, and I've never wanted to live in that box mm. of black. Mm -hmm. I think it's an insult to be called black. Mm. There's a pride in it because I know what it is, just like the N-word. Mm -hmm. There's a pride in using that word amongst our people, even though it was... A derogatory mm. word. There's pride, yeah, black, black pride, and all that yeah. stuff. It's really just a word now. It's just a sound produced to quickly describe what we identify with as brown people. I put so much on it though. Like yeah. I love the word black yeah. so much. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> because I feel like it's all encompassing. That's it is. why I love it. it. Is. Like if I think about black yeah. and the ways that black can be magic. Yes. And black yes. can be a whole yes. that absorbs all things. That's real. And, you know, like it black can be, absorbs all energies and right. Like yeah. but for me when I think about all that I am. Mm-hmm. So much of the way I understand myself is through the lens of blackness. But yeah. we were talking about this, like, yeah. we talk about this all the time, like going to an HBCU, yeah. a historically black college or university. That doesn't That's mean right. everybody's black American. That's true. People are Caribbean, Caribbean African, and of immediate African descent right. from all of the countries in the Caribbean and Africa. And shoot, people from the UK too. That's like true. From the UK. That's true. So something that tried that the way we use the word to tie us all together mm -hmm. to to knit a connection was that's black. Real. That's real. Because they would have been Nigerian, that's and true. Yoruba in particular, that's true. or like Jamaican, mm -hmm. you know, Haitian. and multiracial and like like right. But when we say black, we're like, that's us. That's yeah. all of us. So it's a quick, I easy way to kind it's of shorthand. It's shorthand. But it, it's it's a filled word for me. Like yeah. it has so many elements to it that I like. Yeah. When I think about you and I think about black, 
something that comes to mind for me. And you were just doing it earlier when we were on the phone, footwork, right? Yeah, right. That's black. Too. That's black. You know what right? I mean? Roots in Africa, right? Right. Like, right. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like tribal. Generationally yes. black. Like, yes. I think about stepping. Yes. That's black to me. It's you know black. I mean? It's blackity black. <laughs> it's black. You're right. <laughs> that's real but yes i think about those yeah. those components and it brings me a lot of joy but i really get what you're saying too yeah. because it's like this is a word that was assigned to us mm -hmm. and so the way you negotiate its power and its energy and its definition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is complicated it's complicated it's a love hate relationship with the word well let me ask i love you it this. and i hate it because that's a great transition what is love Mm. Mean to you? Ooh, that's a deep question. I was about to do that, Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> <Who? laughs> it's um, like I said, I've been on a big journey, a big spirit, soul searching journey mm -hmm. uh, since we last talked yeah. on this this platform. Um, what does love mean to me? Mm -hmm. Every time I ask that question, people really got to sit with that for a You got to sit. Like, you got to let it marinate. Not marinate. Marinate. You got to let it soak. Um, I don't want to sound harsh or... Hmm, I believe... I believe love is rare. Mm, say more. I believe love only exists between certain relationships, very specific relationships. The rest of it is pure reverence. Okay. We okay. like separate those. So, I can get. if I, let's say I'm God and I make something that is in my image, my child. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love it, it's a part of me. Mm. And this is gonna kind of lead into, you can only love yourself, but once you identify something as part of yourself, mm. then you can love it, meaning, if I'm the creator God and I created something in my image, I love you unconditionally. Wow. Because it's it's a huge it's a huge undertaking to love, and I'll break it down. So a mother can genuinely, unconditionally love her child without seeing it, without hearing it, without knowing what it looks like, because it's in her belly, she created it. Mm. Right? You love that child. As soon as it's boop, and you start running this kick and you love it. You don't even know what it sounds like, what it looked like, nothing. The same way a father can love that child because he took a part in their creation, mm -hmm. right? It's a part of him. That baby's a part of her. You are a part of God. A grandmother can love a baby because guess what? She is a part of that grandchild. And that's where that unconditional love comes in. Love is very hard to codify. It's above all description to me. Mm. There is no words to describe it, but it is a tie between creation. Mm. Okay. And that's where it exists. When you marry somebody, you can truly love them because you have professed in whatever manner to whatever God you link to that now this person is a part of me. Right? You know, the whole tying together mm -hmm. and all of that and jumping the broom. And that's we ceremony. We, we, the sand, we did all of it. Jump the broom. Boy, what? The Stop the gun. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Shoot the candles. Like, we did. We did all of it. Like, and we, we did go symbolize. We did. We did. All the symbols. <laughs> we did. We did. Vows and all. Like, we did because we understood the. We didn't, but we did, but we didn't understand. We didn't know nothing about we marriage. Did. When we we didn't know. We were just we didn't know thinking daily, we was grown. We didn't be sure. <laughs> we, we, was, we went through the ceremony. Yes. And we went through the process. We understood the ritual. Right. It was important. Right. Mm -hmm. And we didn't understand the underpinnings of that ritual and what it did for us, mm -hmm. but it made us a part of each other. Mm -hmm. It made us related. Yeah. Right. It related us to where now 
I'm capable of loving you without, I can't stop it. I can't mm. cut it off. True love, you can't cut it. So even if something blew up with our relationship today, I cannot stop loving you. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? I might be mad at you. Right. You might be mad at me. But you can't cut off that love right. because we went through that connection. So that's love. It's indescribable. Mm. But the lower levels of that outside of you're not a part of me or I'm not ceremonially joined to you um, is reverence and respect. Right? Okay. Um, and our reverence and respect, like, is this the order? They're kind of like, reverence, respect? yeah, kind of like that. Okay, yeah, okay. Like as far as intensity. Yeah, yeah. Right. I would think reverence for sure. Like you need, you need reverence mm -hmm. for all things. Yeah. Right. If you don't revere anything and, and you know, have any res respect yeah. for it, um, love can't exist. Okay. Or a sense of love can yeah. exist because mm -hmm. we can, you know, we say we, lo I love you to a friend. Mm -hmm. In my heart and mind, that's not love. That's respect. That's reverence. That's, um, you know, I'll do anything for you. Um, that's caring. Um, if you want to use the word loyalty, I don't like to use the word loyalty. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to use the word loyal, mm -hmm. um, meaning you have their best interest at heart. Mm. Um, but you know what it made me think about so if we recognize that we're all connected mm -hmm. that we are all actually a part of each other yes, that's the pathway through which love can be real yes. between any Masses. matter anything yes. but most of the time we just don't right we're not we, reminded we, of it we're not reminded of it. We are we choose connected. not to see it. Right. We make conscious right. effort yeah. not to see it, to dehumanize yes. each other, yes. to hire, put a hierarchy in place, yeah. to construct somebody's humanity. Away, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, in the way a relationship like a it's interesting. child and a parent is a clear, like, biological indicator Link. for some people because that's not even the case for all children and parents. That's you true. know what I mean? That's true. Everybody's relationship ain't biological. But it's that's like, true. when there's a clear biological indicator, it's like, oh, I understand that this person is a part of me because I have adopted the social construct of science and mm. biology that says that's so. That's true. But there's a spiritual construct. There's a spiritual construct. That says we all belong to each other. We're right. all interdependent, interrelated. We're all from one creator. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And so if that's the case. Right. Then love. That's true. Can be present. It can. But it can. because we don't act right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. It's not. And. Again, what I said earlier in the conversation with everyone reflecting what they want to believe about people mm -hmm. upon them, meaning I want to reflect upon you that you're not human mm. or you're not that much of a, much as a human as yeah. I am. Yes. You're not worthy as I am. Than you. I'm balling out on you. I'm flexing. Right. Or, you know, you all of these different things. So you're right. We through dehumanization. We have stopped the conduit of that love yeah. connection. Because I do truly believe what you're saying is if we all recognized that we are all connected, there can be a true, inherent, unconditional love that mm -hmm. exists. And I feel a deep reverence when I walk up on anyone. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to give them utmost respect, which may be a lower level, lower intensity yeah. of love. Mm -hmm. Right, because I also don't have a problem using the word. Yeah, I walk up to a grown ass man and be like, "Bro, I love you." Yeah, love you, man. What's the what's the the engineering like electricity metaphor equivalent to when you cut off a connection? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if God is the plug, mm -hmm. and we're all like currents. Of energy from that mm -hmm. source, mm -hmm. like going to different places. Maybe not the plug. You see what I'm trying to say? Like There's God like... is the power plant. Possibly. Like possibly. God is the power plant, and we're all these light bulbs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in different places, like yeah. You know, some people 
turn their power on and some people they can't afford to have their power on. Right. Like, I'm trying to think about how yeah. that how, how that looks. That. Yeah, yeah, but it's like Yeah. What do we you know the question I'm asking is mm -hmm. what would it look like if the world loved you? Like mm. if everybody's power was paid and turned on so that mm. there really was love for you for all humans for fathers for black men for whatever identities get constructed in you we got into visuals and i'm still visualizing okay okay but how do, how would it look if the whole world loved me mm -hmm. and not specific i'm just thinking not specifically me and i'll get to me in a second yeah, sure. but going back to the visual if God is this big burning fire, let's say the sun, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? If God is this big bonfire, because God is energy, yeah, right? And this fire is just feeding itself, it's keeping going, keeping going, just like the sun. Yeah. And if we are these little candles that got lit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from that big bonfire, which is the story of mm -hmm. you know creation, right? We're images of God, so we are little gods, we're little yeah. fires coming off this large fire if we all recognize that we are little images of God and little G gods from big G God mm -hmm. we would understand that we are all capable of love mm -hmm. the same love that God has for all of his light yeah. all of his little fires um, how would the world look if it loved me the world would be healthy, first of all, because they would love themselves first. Mm. Yeah. They can't love me until they recognize, woke up, and realize their own fire. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. To say, I am actually a fire from the big fire. Once you can't possibly even begin to love me the way I need to be loved until you recognize that you are in the same images of God as I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It'll be so natural once everybody comes to the realization of, oh, I'm the same as you and I'm equal and there's nothing that can change that. Yeah. Oh, we're all human beings created from God. Oh, what unique little things, but we can, it would be impossible not to love them all. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's not just about loving me. That would be a forced error yeah so to say in the, the glitch in the matrix to be like okay let's tilt everybody to love this caramel skin imperfect cold switching lock wearing some days he up some days he hyperactive some days he chill it, it's asking too much yeah yeah and it's like if we can just get the world to a, a space where everybody woke up and realized we are on this rock that's floating in this big dark abyss. Nobody knows what's out there. Mm -hmm. But this is all, we all we got. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> C and B, we all we got. We got this much water. We got this many trees. We got this much land to, to do this much food with. And we are little G gods. Mm. And we love each other. There would be no, there would and be no And we can create from all of that. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. everybody would have housing. Everybody would have food. Everybody would have access to clean water. Everybody would have access to positive social interactions. Yeah. Regardless of how their exterior skin looked mm -hmm. and hair looked. And, anything. And anything, yeah. right? We could be short, tall. You could be fat, skinny, all of these different things. You can love a man or love a woman. You can love a dog. It don't care. They don't care. Because if you understood who we really were, love would be impossible to squelch. Mm. So that's what the world would look like if it was to love Ramon in the midst of all. It would have to love themselves first. Yeah. And that self-love piece feels like it has both an emotional and devotional component to it mm -hmm. and a practical component to mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? It does. 
it's like there's a feeling associated with that, mm-hmm. a belief system associated with that. Mm-hmm. But there's some how you treat yourself too. Yes. Like you were talking about, oh, I went to work out today. I'm like, you loved yourself today. I love myself. You know what I mean? That yes. was some showing some love. Yes. 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 You have to worship yourself mm. before mm. you can worship anybody of God. Seeing the sacred in you. Yes. Once you can worship yourself, then you're not even practicing it. If you can't worship yourself, you're not practicing on the lowest level. Yeah. Ooh. Right? So it's like... The thing you have the most control over. Mm Mm-hmm. Reverence and worship of yourself first. If the whole world did that, it would be impossible not to love each other. It would be impossible not to walk down the street and be like, I see you, boy. Hey, I see you, girl. Hey. What you doing today? You look good. Man, you want something to eat? Oh, I know you got something to eat because y'all got something to eat because we love each other. So <laughs> right. there ain't no famine in the world. It ain't no hoarding. It ain't no famine. Ain't no hoarding, no famine. You, know, you want some of this? I got a little something different from you. You know, and it's just like... Want to switch? Want to trade? Want to switch and trade? Which we were on. Yep. Before the advent of capitalism, the advent of right. colonialism, the advent of conquerors coming through and Alexander the Greats and these different people who wanted to say hoard, hoard, kill, kill mm-hmm. genocide because that operational mode of hoard and kill mm-hmm. comes out of there isn't enough for me I'm mm-hmm. not good enough if I don't have everything mm-hmm. I'm not good enough if I don't own you mm-hmm. and where'd that come from? Mm-hmm. fear mm. so fear if, if the world was rid of fear we would have love abundantly if the world was rid of fear nobody would fear this six foot tall brown man walking down the street with locks nobody would fear i wouldn't fear them trying to come at me and me not having to wear a gun Mm -hmm. in certain places right because now that's a site that's a cyclical thing now i have to protect myself from their fear Mm. right so it's like all of these different fears exist. White ladies wouldn't grab their purses. You know, older black women wouldn't frown up when they see me and then loosen up when I open my mouth and say, hey, how you doing? Good morning to me. You actually one of the good ones. Mm. Thinking I was gonna talk disrespectful and start cursing and, you know, disrespecting my elders because that's what they're used to. The yeah. fear of, the fear of a, you know, an older white man that I might try to challenge him because he's not so viral anymore and so healthy and so yeah. strong. The fear of, you know, other black men. Mm. That's just pure fear. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not even going to talk about the fear that you can cut with a knife when two strange black men that don't know each other in the same space off of what? We've been taught to fear each other through TV, through media, through brainwashing, Mm. Through the ages, we've been taught that we're weapons to each other. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, there's a lot of fear in the world. So it's a lot of fear to dig out and process before the world can love somebody like me. And it's so hard to challenge what you see and what the world is mirroring to Mm -hmm. you of yourself. Like, it takes so much cognitive and emotional labor Mm -hmm. to see a maligned image of you in a mirror. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a funhouse mirror that mm-hmm. you're looking at. It's yes. fucked up. Yes. And to see that and be like, that's not me. Mm-hmm. If that's the only mirror people show you. Yes. And that's the type of deprogramming yes. that has to happen. Like, I don't need a mirror to see myself. Oof. I really, Ooh. I don't, I just know who I am. I just yeah. know what kind of light I'm carrying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know whose light I'm carrying and what kind of light I'm mm-hmm. carrying. I know the intensity of the light I'm carrying. Mm-hmm. I know who I am when I walk into a room. I know what I'm capable of, even if you don't. Yeah. That and hope you don't miss people. out. Listen, that messes with people. When you walk in a room and know what you're capable of mm-hmm. when they don't. Yeah. And they feel like they can discredit you yes. or shortchange you. And you're like, oh, you don't have that power. Yes. I already knew who I was. Like, I wasn't even asking for your opinion on that. Yeah. I'm clear. Yeah. Mm. It's a certain loneliness with that too, mm, right? Because you come across, you know, as a person that looks like me, 
you come across so many people who shut off to you. Yeah. Black men, black women. Mm -hmm. Black women think you want to flirt with them. Black men think you want to challenge them. You know, white men think you want to challenge them and their authority, their perceived authority. Mm -hmm. White women think you just, you want to have sex with them and rape them. Emmett Till, mm -hmm. the Emmett Till complex, right? Um, you know, foreign people have believed the hype from media that they've watched from if they lived in India or China or all these different parts of the world. They've only watched what the majority has put on TV about us. So they see the wire. Mm -hmm. They see all these different shows of us locked up in jail and that's all they see. Yeah. You know, and so it's like it's a lot. It's a lot to contend with. It's a lot to go up against. Mm -hmm. So And it hurts for me to watch people believe that about themselves. Mm -hmm. Like that is one of the most painful processes to watch a black person believe. Mm the stereotypes about themselves, like the worst things possible about themselves, about blackness, and then to act out of that level of belief. Yes, they live up to that level. Yeah. If you if you were told that you were a nigga, you're going to act like that after a certain amount of times. Mm -hmm. And then everybody is, yeah, if you're told you're black, you're going to act black. If you're told you're a king, you're going to act like a king. Mm. <laughs> if, you, if you're told you're a millionaire, you're going to act like a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Because millionaire is a social construct. Yes, These guys is. only mean the meaning that we give to them Don't that we nothing. buy into. Don't mean nothing. You see how the dollar is now higher than... The British pound almost. Like I think it shifted. Did it, did it flip already? So it's like... Money is a social construct. It is. <laughs> all of this shit is made it up. It is. It's all made up. <laughs> Everybody, we in the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Which pill you want? It's the type of shit we be talking about, dude. Man. Oh, okay. So who do you sometimes struggle to love? Mm, I struggle to love those who don't respect or revere me. Mm -hmm. That's who I struggle I struggle to love anybody. It's not about a look. Mm -hmm. It's not about... I don't generalize. Mm -hmm. I literally am to the point in my life where I've reached 40 and I now know that I can no longer generalize and be an intelligent human being. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like I literally have to go on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. Which is more work for the brain, which is why people generalize. It is. But I feel you on like the intelligence that's required mm -hmm. to be a loving human being. Yes. It takes a it takes some effort. It mm -hmm. takes some willpower. Yeah. So it's like, hey, you're not deserving of my love if you dot dot dot. If you mm -hmm. don't respect me. If you and it's not, you know, I'll be honest with you, there's the little things we like cut cut me off in traffic. I don't mm -hmm. care about that. That's human nature, mm -hmm. right? That's somebody's emotions and things driving them. I don't attach to those little actions. Yeah. I attach to actions that are pure disrespect mm -hmm. towards me, right? Like somebody cut me off in the car. They just cut the car off. Right. They right. cut me off. They, they don't know who you are. They don't even know who I am. Yeah. And honestly, let's be real. Nobody knows who you are. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows who you are. So really nothing is personal. Mm. When somebody is giving you disrespect or lack of reverence, they're generalizing you. Mm. Mm -hmm. So they're not operating their higher intelligence. So it's, I'm almost to the point where I'm just like, now you gotta come back around. Right, I gotta like, come back around. Now. Like I'm at an understanding point now. Like if somebody bumps my shoulder in the store because they think I'm black and they think that they're white, and they think that they're right mm -hmm. and they have the right of way. Mm -hmm. I now know that wasn't general, that wasn't aimed toward Ramon. Mm -hmm. So I don't even personalize it anymore. Does it make me mad? Yes. If I saw that person, if, so, if I saw that same person who just bumped my shoulder out of their thoughts of white supremacy and whatever, 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 whatever thoughts they had about generalizing me. Yeah. And the next second, God forbid, they got shot. 
my reverence and love for human life, for God's creation, would drag them behind a shelf and apply pressure and call for help. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the level where I'm operating, that level of intelligence and understanding that I'm operating on now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean my emotions said, man, bump me one more time and I'm going to knock your teeth out. Mm -hmm. My emotions are saying that, but my intelligence is now overriding that, knowing that it's not directed toward me. You're one of those generalizers. You're one of those skin worshippers. Mm-hmm. Poor baby, you fell into that sad system and you believed it all. Oh, but you just got hurt. Let me help you. Mm-hmm. Because my love overrides that. My mm-hmm. reverence for life overrides all of that. So that's where I am right now. Like, okay. I get that though because it's like you can't control the emotion. You control your behavior. Mm-hmm. The emotions are going to come and they go. Gonna come. They're going to come up and go back down. Right. They're going to move through you. Yeah. But your behavior is the love. Right. The decision you make the decision. despite that emotion. That's the love. That's the reference. You cut me off in traffic, I'm going to feel it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to feel it. But. But what you be feeling though? Because I always wonder in traffic, like, what do you be mad about? <laughs> because you know what it is now? It used to be personal. They cut mm-hmm. me off. Uh-huh. And it's not that anymore. Because I got cut off probably three or four times today. Mm-hmm. You know, violently. And I mean, my emotions didn't even come up. But when it's like extra aggressive and it almost caused the accident, that the emotion of you tried to end my life, mm-hmm. you tried to threaten my life mm-hmm. comes up. So it's the same emotion as if somebody came up and flinched at me. Mm-hmm. Or somebody came right. up and, and opened up a knife or... Mm-hmm. Or had a pulled a gun on me. It's the same emotion as it's that. Fear. It's fear. Mm-hmm. It's definitely fear for my life and my well being, or my child in the back of the car. Now it's not directed at Ramon anymore. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, bro, listen, you tripping? Hey, calm down, and I'll hit the brake and yeah. back off and give. You see that? I'll mm-hmm. give them their room and let them go on. I'm not again the actions. Mm-hmm. I still don't follow up with road rage yeah. and driving up on them and. You know, beep, beep. Come beep, beep, on, bro. Pulling guns and throwing <laughs> rocks out there on the right. Come on, come on, bro. Like, I don't follow up on the actions. I might even say something out of that emotion. Yeah. Like, man, what was that? They can't hear me. They can't. So it's not really classified as an action because <laughs> they can't, because they can't hear me. You know what I'm saying? That's literally like That's just emotional a whiplash of my it's of my emotional ex outlet. Yes, it's not like I didn't roll down. Like, Action would be roll yeah. down a window and let them hear it. Okay. You know, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around, who hears it fall? Yeah, it's one of those things where the tree fell and nobody was around to hear it. Gotcha. Type of thing. It was just the outward expression. I get that yeah, yeah. But it becomes an action. Explicative. Yes. <laughs> Explicative. Exactly. So I'm getting I'm getting to that point in life where it's it's hard for me not to love you because I am love. I am reverence. And I recognize who I am now and I love myself. So honestly, you can't stop. You can't stop you. You can't stop me from loving. You can't stop me from revering. Mm. Cuz love is extreme for me. You can't stop me from revering life. Mm. So that's the Good tie into the last question. Mm-hmm. What do you love most about you? Mm. I love that I am not the same person that I was 10 minutes ago. Mm. I love the fact that. I'm not the same person I was five years ago, 10 years ago, let alone 10 minutes ago. I love the fact that I am able to evolve and learn in this short lifespan Mm -hmm. and morph almost my being into just different, different modes of intelligence and, and, I don't want to say higher or lower because I don't want to, you know, hierarchy, Mm -hmm. you know, cardinalize it or whatnot. But I just want to say, like, my ability to be elastic and change, Mm -hmm. right? Um, 
that's that's what I love most about myself. I love the neuroplasticity of my brain to be able to take new concepts and toss and juggle them around and figure out and figure out what to take and what to accept and what to just set aside and just grow as a human being. I love growing. You know, I heard something one of these gurus on on the internet was like if something is not growing and evolving is dead. Mm. Mm. So I love to be alive, right? And being alive and just evolving and growing. Yeah. You know, and I really that's what I love about myself. We know how quickly life can shift Mm -hmm. and how easily life can your life flame can be extinguished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that evolution in you, the ability to evolve and the willingness to evolve. Mm -hmm. Because we all have the ability, but not all of us are willing. willing. But not the will. And so if you get stagnant, you get stuck because right. you're you're afraid. You know, right. you're holding on. And for you, it's like, I'm willing to take the risk. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to be open mm-hmm. to whatever this evolution takes me to. Yeah. And more often, more often than not, it's growth. It's growth. It's growth. Expanded wisdom and insight. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Just more. And I don't give it. Don't get me wrong, the more you learn, the more confusing things become. Right, because then you realize there's so much more to learn. You're like, well, <laughs> like, oh my clearly God. I'm about to learn all this. Oh, this is this not... iteration of life. Exactly. It's so much. It's so much information out there, and it's exciting. And it's like, whew. It do be exciting, though, because it's like you can learn anything. Yes, anything. When you know you can learn anything, yes. if you really just had the time. Yep. That's the spice of life. Overwhelming, for me. but it's also very fun. I love it. Yes, <laughs> which is why I do all the things that I do. Mm-hmm. I'm a jack of all trades. Like, you know, this year coming up, 2023, I want to learn how to drive a yacht. Yeah. I want to learn how to pilot a freaking yacht. 2023 is really coming up. That's it's coming up. It's coming up. And in 2025, I want to learn how to drive the private spaceships that they're going to start selling. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying that there's a plethora of stuff. Maybe 2030. But there's going to be so many things to learn. I don't... The day I stop living is the day I stop learning. Mm -hmm. I might as well just go and go into the... and crawl into the grave. Right? I don't want to be that 70, 80 year old man who like, well, I don't know about that little technology and I don't need to know. You figure it Why out. Why you gonna sound like that? When because you just feel like <laughs> I feel like you just go back to your ancestral no. type of ways and you talk no. like them when and you rock like this. But why you from New Orleans? Like you this, did it? it must be my ancestors. Maybe that's my ancestors down there. I don't know, but they're talking like this now when I'm 80 years old, baby. <laughs> Up and you got it. I'm gonna be like, listen, oh, I don't know this man. Listen, Lord. <laughs> listen. And the day that I do that, the day I switch up talking like that, and the day that I say I don't know how to work this, or I don't know what you're talking about, that's the day I might as well stop living. Mm. Because I feel like the human brain is amazing, and God gave us a great brain to just soak up massive amounts of information Mm -hmm. and be able to interact with life you know that's why we're here that's why we have these appendages Mm. right we could just be a brain and a spinal cord and eyes ears and mouth but we have these appendages to move around and interact with life Mm -hmm. that's why i'm so hands-on with things i'm like let me use all of my appendages let me dance let me move let me build yeah let me you know let me do all these things with these appendages while I'm here because after this I don't know my energy is I know my energy is not going to have appendages yeah you know what I mean my spirit so it's like let me do all I can while I'm here and enjoy this body Mm. enjoy this avatar while I'm here and that is how to love a human Boom. Any place that folks can find you, anything you're doing that you want to shout out? You know, I'm doing a lot. I know. Too I know much. what you're doing. I might be doing too much. We um, all doing the most. We do the most. Anything that you're doing that you want. You know, I'm like amplified. You know, I I want to amplify everything because the things that I'm amplifying right now are amplifying people. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, a project I have that I'm working on now is called the Back of House Collective. Bye. Bach, B-O-H-C for short. Um, it's based here in Louisville. 
Um, and we're based out of a new 8,000 square foot facility. Damn. You know, and we'll be building out 13 kitchens and three storefronts, potentially, uh, and, a, and a food truck outlet, like a food truck yard for them to sell their foods as well um, here. So the potential to launch um, tens, if not hundreds of new entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, and make them wealthy, not necessarily millionaires, not necessarily any kind of monetary goal, but to make them self-sustaining and wealthy, mm -hmm. wealthy with knowledge, uh, wealthy with the knowledge to pass on to their children so they can continue that um, cycle yeah. of, of wealth and, and business ownership. Um, Where can they find Bach? You can find Bach online. Um, right now, I think we have a Facebook mm -hmm. presence right now, which is just uh, Bach Lou, B-O-H-C-L-O-U. That's the backslash after the Facebook.com. Um, and you can follow me um, at Blessed and High mm -hmm. on Instagram. Look, I sound like that old man. <laughs> I don't know what that Insta, Insta <laughs> Telegram is. Um, you can find me on Blessed, the letter N, High on Instant Telegram. <laughs> 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 And from there, I definitely will be updated with all the new stuff that, you know, that's going on in the, in the ether yeah. around Ramon. Well, all right, boo. Hey. We did it. We did it. How to love me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love, love.